Hi, my name is Greg Berger. Uh, welcome to the Fresh Bread Daily instructional video series. Hopefully this is the first of many new videos to come. Um, today we are going to make homemade English muffins. If you've never had a homemade English muffin, if you've just relied on Thomas's English muffins, which I have some right over there, they're fine, they're great, but making them yourself, it's an entirely different experience. Um, and you get a whole bunch of them, so you'll be able to have breakfast sandwiches for weeks with these. You could freeze them. Uh, they're great. So, first of all, last night, before I went to bed, I mixed equal amounts of flour, water, and yeast. Um, the recipe will be posted with this so you can see the instructions, the actual things. And uh, this is 10 a.m. the next morning. You can kind of see my, uh, this is the leaven. Uh, it's bubbly, it's gooey, it's uh, billowy. This is ready to go. It is wanting to make muffins. So I have a big bowl here. I have two cups of water that I've heated in the microwave. It's warm. I can stick my finger in it, my dirty finger, because I just stuck it in the dough. Um, it's warm to the touch, but it's not hot. You don't want it scorching hot or it's gonna kill the yeast that you just worked all night waking up. But you also don't want it too cold because the, the yeast like that warmth to then um, multiply and be happy and get the dough rising. So I'm gonna pour the water into the bowl. I'm gonna take all of the leaven and I'm gonna pour that in. And then I'm going to scrape out, get as much of that as I can. So now we have kind of a soupy, yeasty, it smells, it smells like, a, well, it smells like yeast. You've smelled that smell before. Um, so with my hands, I'm gonna reach in there and break it all up. And so it's now it's just a bowl of, looks, you know, it's just watery. I'll show you in the B-roll of that. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands. And now to that, I'm going to add eight cups of bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour. I tend to use bread flour for almost everything I do. It just feels like it, it works a little better for the recipes that I've been posting. So I'm going to put eight cups to, you have to kind of count them out. I count them out on my hands because I always forget. So it's three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. So there's eight cups in there. Eight cups of flour right into that soupy, yeasty mix. And then I should have done this before, but I didn't. We're gonna add to that one teaspoon of salt. Just sprinkle that right in there. And that's all the ingredients that are going into the English muffins. So now you're just going to take that mix, stick your hand, don't make sure that you don't have to answer the phone. You don't have to pet the dogs or get the kid anything because your hand is going to be messy for the next couple minutes. So we're just going to stick our hand in there like that. And we're just going to keep turning it like this turning and turning and turning and squishing until all of the flour is wet. So we're just kind of hydrating the dough. It's gonna be kind of a, a shaggy mess here for a while, but you're gonna do this. This is all the kneading that you're gonna to have to do. So I think part of the uh, fear of people making bread is that I don't know how to knead. It's going to take too much time. There's too much science to it. But uh, really, it's just kind of following some pretty simple directions. It's making sure that your water was kind of, it doesn't have, to, you don't have to have a thermometer and know the exact temperature, but you know, finger warm. So we're just going to mix this all together. 
gets a little hard. So your hand's gonna start cramping up. It's kind of a, you can pick up the whole thing now, but you wanna make sure that all of the dry flour is incorporated into the wet. And then you get it all over your hands. This is why you kind of need to make sure you set a little bit of time away for that. I don't know how I'm gonna turn off the camera. I think I'll just get dough on it. So there, so this looks pretty good. All of, I don't see any more dry flour. There's a little bit on the sides, that doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do now is this is good, it's all mixed. So we're gonna put a towel over it and then it sits for about the next three to four hours, you're gonna, we'll come back to it, but it's gonna slowly start rising up. And then every once in a while, during that period of time, you're gonna stretch it, stretch it, put it back in there, put the towel back on and kind of let it sit. And that's it. So that we're gonna revisit this in a couple hours and I'll be back. Okay, so this has been in here for about an hour. It is uh, noticeably puffier. It's still a pretty stiff dough. But uh, what we're gonna do is turn the dough like this. Sometimes it helps if you wet your fingers a little bit, but uh, it's not super sticky today. Sometimes it's stickier, just depends on the weather. It depends on how hot your house is, how closely you measured things. It doesn't really matter. If it's super sticky, just wet your fingers. If not, we're just gonna turn the dough a few times like that. And you'll notice that it, every time you do that, it gets a little smoother and a little easier to do. So that was after about an hour. We're gonna let it sit for another hour, turn it. One more hour after that, it should be big and puffy and ready to go to the next level. Okay, so it's been about three hours since we started. I've done that turn two times. Now, we have this big, billowy, not super sticky, my hand's not sticking to it, lump of dough. So now it is time to divide this up and we're gonna stretch it out. So what we're gonna do, cutting board, rice flour. I use rice flour as my barrier between the dough and the cutting board because it doesn't stick to keep it from not sticking. You can use flour, but then the flour kind of gets gummy sometimes. So the rice flour keeps it from getting too sticky. But if you don't have rice flour, you can use regular flour. So I'm gonna get as much out of there as I can. My bowl will look like that. And then I have the big lump of dough. I'm gonna kind of make it into a circle. It doesn't have to be exact. Take a bread divider, and I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it into two wedges. Set one off to the side. And so over here, I have a sheet pan and I have a towel on it. It's a cotton dish towel. It doesn't, it's not terry cloth. It doesn't have those little fuzzies all over it. So um, flour sack, that's what you call it. And I've put more rice flour on here. You do want to have rice flour for this. So ignore what I said earlier, just get the rice flour. So I'm going to take this and what I'm essentially trying to do is gently stretch it out so it'll fit as a big square into my pan, my sheet pan. I get the sheet pans at Target. I got the, uh, Towels at Target. I have a million of these towels because they get kind of gunky. The bread gets on there, it dries, makes a mess. So, kind of have it almost the right size. So now I'm gonna pick it up and kind of let gravity pull it a little further into a big sheet of dough. Sometimes it gets a little too big. Doesn't matter, because you can push it back. So now I'm going to do that so you can see it. Oh no, it's stuck to the other one. Hold on. 
Oh, brother. Don't do it this way. Don't do it this way. Make sure you put that other piece just off to the side, not right where you're going to put it. So, <laughs> pretend this is a little nicer. We're going to slightly stretch it so it fits into that pan. I'm going to fix this big hole by just plugging it up. Doesn't really matter. You could be a little rough with this. Doesn't matter, because now, now that we have it like that, we're going to let this now sit for about three more hours. We're going to cover it up and let it sit, and it'll puff up again, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is cutting the guys out. All right, so we've made the dough. We've let it risen. It's let it risen. It's risen in its bowl, we turned it a few times, we took it out, we spread it out onto a heavily dusted towel in a pan. So now comes, not tricky part, just the next part. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take some rice flour and we have our pan there. <laughs> I need more cameras. We're gonna sprinkle this on top because we're now going to take a cutting board. Probably should do this. We're gonna take the cutting board, we're gonna sit it on top, and now we're going to flip it. And then take this off, and now we have our sheet of muffins, sheet of dough on our cutting board. This is gonna help us cut them out, cut them out nicer. So, I got a muffin ring. Muffin ring. I just have a whole thing of different size rings. And so what you're gonna do, it helps to put it on the cutting board because you're gonna, when you cut it, it's just gonna cut nicer if you have it on a board. So that's why we're doing that. But so we're going to just do this, just like you're making cutout cookies. We're gonna go through and cut out as many English muffins as we can out of the sheets. So it'll be like that. All right, so now, now that we have all the English muffins cut out, I have a flat top grill here. This is just an electric grill. You can do this in a pan. Is this better? We can do this in a pan on the stove, but I find that I can do more at a time using this setup. And so this is kind of, I have this pancake pan thing really now just to make English muffins. So what we're gonna do next is I have a jar of clarified butter. So how you make clarified butter, you take a stick of unsalted butter and then you boil it, melt it down, and then it'll foam up the little solids the milk solids will rise to the top. If you just use regular butter, the butter is gonna start burning as you make these. So doing the clarified butter keeps it from burning, um, but it's just butter. And so we're gonna dip our brush into there. We're going to brush it all over the pan. This gets really hot, um, but then And then we're gonna take our muffins a few at a time. We're gonna lay them down just like you would cook in a pancake that was already formed. So we're gonna lay down a bunch of the English muffins. And then I'm going to take the butter and I'm going to brush the tops of them also. And then we're going to cook these probably for about uh, four or five minutes on each side and then flip. And uh, as they're, as they get going here, 
um, they'll start rising up. You'll see them kind of in real time rising up. And some of them will have a big bubble that comes out of the side of it and you just kind of let it go. That's the, uh, that's the nooks and crannies happening. Oh, you can start seeing the stuff I've hidden in the backgrounds as I move my camera around. So we are going to find our flipper, which I should have done beforehand. All right. All right, so as you can see, some of them like this guy, really bubbly. He's getting a big bubble there. Um, we're gonna, seems like a good time to flip it. I may have flipped it a little too early, but they're starting the brown on one side. That one looks good. This uh, griddle's a little inconsistent sometimes with the way it heats, but that's all right. So we're gonna flip each one of these over and some of those bubbles will deflate. That one's going crazy. Look at that guy. That one's not right, <laughs> but it'll be fine. It's still an English muffin. However these turn out, they're still gonna be English muffins. Um, the thing I don't like about Thomas's English muffins, I'm gonna pop that bubble. So I don't like the cornmeal that they have all over the bottom of them. That's, that's a, English muffin pet peeve of mine is the cornmeal. So I don't use the cornmeal, I use rice flour when I'm spreading it out. And so the rice flour keeps it from sticking to everything. But uh, when you cook it, the rice flour kind of just becomes part of the muffin. You don't have to have that cornmeal that gets all over the counter and stuck in the toaster and whatnot. So we're uh, just gonna continue to cook these a couple, couple more minutes. I may flip them one more time to make sure that uh, the other side is pretty brown. Eh, see, it's still not brown yet. I'm just rushing this because I'm making videos. Don't rush it. It's a, it's a process. Let it cook. All right, so these have been cooking for, you know, five, five minutes on each side, five to 10 minutes total. Looks like they're about done. What's awesome about these, I mean, look at this one. Ah, they were so hot. It's like, it's all misshapen. There's a giant bubble sticking out of the side. It's not perfectly round. It's hot. Th to me, you know, the, the imperfections of these muffins are what make them great. Um, so just go with it. These have, they've doubled, they've about doubled in size. As they start going cooking, they rise straight up. And that's because when we use the, uh, the ring, it creates tension down the sides, which instead of having them blob out, it makes them go up. Uh, so we're gonna take all these off, throw them on a rack over here that you cannot see. And uh, part of the problem with making these English muffins that I haven't quite figured out yet, I've done a couple, bunch of different tests, is that when you're making them, you're gonna end up with this, right? This is like, you know, the dough. We're gonna throw a couple more of these, the last ones back on here. But then you have a lot of dough and I've tried a few different things. I've tried crunching this all back up into a ball and rolling it back out. Doesn't work. So what I do is I make super weird, English muffins with the scraps. I just take my knife and I cut them and I use all the, the middle pieces. Still make fantastic, weird, alien-shaped English muffins. Those aren't the ones that you're gonna put on your Instagram, but they taste fine. They're still English muffins. They may look funny, but they're the same ingredients as the round ones. So give them a chance. So I'm just gonna butter all these guys back up and then uh, and then we're done. Once you're done, once they cool for a little bit, you're gonna cut them open, toast them, put some butter, put some jelly, make a homemade English muffin sandwich, do whatever you can. They freeze great, put them in a butt. There's all that stuff again that I tried to hide. 
on either side. Junk, junk, this is a big dog right here. But uh, yeah, so that's how you do it. Homemade English muffins. Thank you for watching.